main Philippine island of Luzon is home to many well-known volcanoes, but none are more infamous than Mount Pinatubo. It last erupted cataclysmically in June of 1991, sending 10 billion tons of magma and toxic gases into the upper atmosphere, significantly altering global weather for the next two years. We were picked up from Angeles City at 4 a.m. one January morning and driven to the Pinatubo base camp. Walking past rows of waiting 4x4s into the registration and health check area, we were at our assigned vehicle well before sunrise. For roughly 500 years prior to 1991, Mount Pinatubo lay dormant the area around the mountain was lush and green. Then the eruption deposited billions more tons of ash and rock around the mountain, which flooded down the slopes, filling nearby rivers with up to 200 meters or 660 feet of lahar. The road on which we were slowly bumping along, much to the agony of our backs, was 12 and a half miles along the top of one of these lahar fields. Much to our relief, we stopped to get out and stretch and have a look around, just as dawn was breaking over the surrounding mountains. Back in the Land Rover, we moved on slowly crawling over the remaining miles of Water Street Lahar. We reached the trailhead for the hike and realized that the river had carved a valley over the past 30 years. The surrounding Lahar was at least 300 feet high. And it pays to be early by the time we returned from our hike, there were five times as many parked jeeps. After a quick pit stop, we set off on the first leg of the hike. Three miles along the river, sometimes crossing it, gradually climbing 800 feet above where we'd started. Passing by boulders that were larger than ourselves, that had been tossed miles away from the center of the eruption, like gigantic spitballs. And we were still always hundreds of feet below the top of the lahar. Prior to the eruption, the lush slopes of Pinatubo had been the home to the indigenous Ida peoples, descendants of the island's first inhabitants from 40,000 years ago. The sacred mountain is the home of their chief deity, Apuna, who they believe was angered by illegal logging and corrupt exploratory drilling in the 1980s, causing the eruption. Fortunately, Seismologists had enough warning to evacuate tens of thousands of people, including the Ita, from around the volcano. The Ita started returning in the late 1990s, and in the 2000s, about 8,000 families were granted ancestral land rights, giving them legal protection against future incursion and exploitation. Today, the families live above the river and snell snacks and drinks to hot and hungry tourists hiking through their land. As we approached Pinatubo's center, the land was getting more and more green. By the time we'd reached the end of the first part of the hike, the jungle had almost completely reclaimed it, regrowing in the fertile volcanic soil. The marker at the final mile of the trek laid down a challenge. But, not ones to be told what to do, we decided to take our sweet time and appreciate the lush, 
tropical beauty along the way. Like the first part of the hike, the initial ascent along the river was gradual, but then you reach the stairs. A sharp ascent of the final 200 feet. But you do reach the end, conquering a hard four and a half miles that takes you 1,100 feet over where you started. And the view of the lake is worth every single drop of sweat along the way. We hung around to have our picnic lunch and to take it all in. The lake hides an active volcano and swimming has been banned since 2004 due to high levels of toxic chemicals in the water including sulfur. One man drowned in 2013 ignoring the warnings and these chemicals have also stained parts of the riverbed. But up safe from our perch on the overlook, draped in lush jungle regrowth all around, Pinatubo's crater and the lake are nothing short of breathtaking.